Behind the chillingly ironic heart hanging on the door, authorities say were some of the most heartless acts imaginable against the six kids living here. Neighbors saw the kids rarely and then not at all. But then all of a sudden we didn't hear nothing from them, you know. Like this, in this past winter's been the worst, where the house stayed dark all the time. Children's Services claims the kids were regularly starved, beaten, locked up. Three of them kept prisoners in a closet ever since Valentine's Day. Let out only once a day for meager scraps of food, punished even to the point of eating dog and cat feces. At one point, the kids claimed that the women nailed down the windows to keep them from getting out. Somehow, though, the boys pried open those nails, climbed out onto the porch, and ran away. Police found the emaciated boys wandering the streets barefoot. It's one of the worst neglectful cases that we've seen in a very long time. Children's Services Director Joseph White says there's no question something went horribly wrong here inside the house and with the system itself. Though reports of abuse surfaced in November, no one visited the home until after the first of the year, and even then, no investigation was opened. I have major concerns. We are required to investigate cases of abuse within 24 to 72 hours. Uh, they have this large a gap. I can't explain it. And I don't know how it happened. I want to find out. The kids are between the ages of 6 and 14. One 8-year-old weighed only 28 pounds. Mary Rolls sobbed in court. Yes, yes, Alice sir. Jenkins showed little emotion as they heard the long list of charges they were about to admit to. Kidnapping, felonious assault, endangering children, and then... Uh, how do you plead to the charges in the indictment? Guilty. Ms. Jenkins, the same question. Uh, after reading the various counts, uh, what is your plea in reference to the counts as contained in the indictment? Moments later, both women were led away into custody, bond immediately revoked. Though there's very little satisfaction to be found in a case so tragic, prosecutors were glad they never had to put the kids on the stand in a trial. Our biggest concern is, is what's in the best interest of those kids, as well as to protect society. But these kids are just wonderful kids now, and they're fragile. In the end, the women who put the kids through almost unspeakable horrors claimed they pled guilty for the kids' sake. One way. Uh, she could start uh, attempting to rebuild and, and uh, uh, try to make things better is to avoid a trial and, and make these kids testify and that was one of the main in, uh, reasons she entered the plea. She accepted responsibility for what she did today. She's genuinely remorseful and I think she did the right thing. Lighthearted banner between Mary Rolls and Alice Jenkins before the sentencing soon turned to cold defiance, even as one of Rolls' own children stepped forward to speak. Now, we weren't allowed to videotape the now 15 year old boy who told the women he never wanted to see them again and if they ever got out of prison to stay away from him. Prosecutors who at times became so choked up even they couldn't speak showed pictures of the urine stained closet where the children were imprisoned, walls scarred from one child banging his head against them, a refrigerator and shelves packed with food even as they starved. Judge Patricia Cosgrove held Mary Rolls just as responsible even if she may not have initiated the abuse. Uh, licking a toilet seat. Uh, eating dog and cat feces at any point in time, if you acted as a mother in this case, you could have prevented the harm to your children. You chose not to. Then the judge unleashed her full fury before sending the women to prison for 30 years. I have had cold-blooded murderers stand in front of me, rapists, child abusers, burglars, drug traffickers. I would have to say that the two of you are perhaps the coldest, most unfeeling, least empathetic criminals I have ever seen.